Hey guys, today Alan's going to give us all a lesson on antique, vintage, historic spark plugs. And it, it's not going to be boring, I promise. So come on along. Hey Alan, I've been bugging you about your spark plugs. Yep. And you finally have agreed, no, I don't know finally, <laughs> it's, it's come to the right time to talk about your vintage spark plugs. Yep. And you have, uh, how have you come to uh, be in possession of these spark plugs? Well, by trial and error and money. You know, when you have a, you know, we have 20 or so, 110, 120-year-old vehicles. Mm -hmm. So I want them to kind of be accurate. And so I would go to spark plug conventions or find out somebody that has some antique spark plugs. And I'd buy several of them. And I would run them for a while till they fouled. And then I would try to find more. And, and then, you know, and it was kind of cheap, you know, 30 or 40 years ago when I started doing that. Yeah, but the spark plugs, you know, a nice set of four spark plugs might set you back one hundred fifty dollars for antique ones. Wow! Okay. And you're not going to be able to repeat your your results because you're not going to buy any more of those spark plugs. Right. So this video is to what to do today. You know, yes. it's twenty twenty five, almost twenty six, yep. and you want to get a spark plug that will make it run completely perfectly as it would have one hundred twenty years ago, mm -hmm. but spend five to twenty dollars. Wow, so we have a real nice budget practical side to this, too. Yeah. And we're going to make our spark plugs, and they'll be formulated for the, our, our cars. Okay. And I say this a lot, but again, there's a lot of museums that have cars that maybe haven't run in 50 years, and you'll walk past it and say, well, that's cool, but you drive your cars. And right. People need to understand, you know what a fouled spark plug is, because you've probably seen one recently, because right. you're driving them. So if you're going to go on a 500-mile tour, and, and I was going to do it, how I used to do it 30 or 40 years ago, uh -huh. I would maybe spend $500 in today's money yeah. buying, you know, as many, maybe 20 of the same kind of spark plug. So as each one fouled at 50 miles or 120 miles or 210 miles, I would put more in. Yeah. I'm very more, I'm a lot more conscious of that today. And so I, I know how to take a modern plug, machine it down, and make it work. And that's what we'll describe. Okay. Well, I can't wait to dig in. I really have been looking forward to this. All so right. uh, call me crazy. <laughs> but here we go. Alan, it's been so nice of you to get all your uh, all these spark plugs out and sort them and organize them for us. This is really, really cool. Well, where do we start with old spark plugs? I mean, how old is old? Let's start with that. Uh, 1897 is the oldest spark plug that I know a date for. Okay. And it goes with my 1897 DDM Bouton Explosion Race Bike. It's this one here. Okay. It says DDM right on it. Yes, it's a, it does. It's a take apart plug. It came with this wooden ca cocoon <laughs> and it had a top two. It has a center electrode and a ground. Right. 18 thousandths from each of the triangles to ground. Wow. Um, and because it's take apart, ch -ch -ch -ch, you can clean the porcelain, so if it's if it's oil fouled, and it, it would be oil fouled from time to time because it's a total loss engine, which means it doesn't recirculate; it just pumps oil. You just let oil get in there too much, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you clean it. And this this plug is 130, 129 years old now, and I still run it in my 1897, and I think it'll last four or five hundred more years. <laughs> it's going to be a long time to wear out. That center electrodes. electrodes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Long time. Long time. It's holding up very well. And the, the neat thing about this plug is it's 18 millimeters, which is still the standard today for the large plugs. So the very first spark plug, they decided, let's have an 18 millimeter thread. We still have that today. Let's have an electrode to ground, 18 thousandths of an inch. It's the same thing today for the same type plug. And let's make it so that you never have to buy another one. Let's make it so it takes apart and you can clean it. That's incredible. So this would work in anything that this would thread into today. Wow. That's crazy. They've never found a better solution. They just said, this is fine. It works. It, it is fine. It worked fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's great. So the next thing in history. Yes. These are mica plugs. These are split doors. This is a mica insulator, not porcelain. And these came in a variety of, of threads and heat ranges. Some of these on the earliest ones with a large thread. Look how deep that is for the electrode. That's a long way. Oh, wow, there's a deep well in there. So that's, I mean, that's a long way. Yeah. So, and it's a take apart plug too. So you can clean that out. 
So no matter what, if it fills up with oil uh, or the combination of oil and carbon, you can take it apart and clean it. Okay. Uh, the Sometimes these leaked a little bit, but I still run these in my 1913 uh, Excelsior board track racing motorcycle and my 1914 Harley. They're still pretty good. Yeah. And they came in a lot of different threads and sizes. Yeah, you've got a nice variety to show yep. us here. So and what's that other, the smaller thread, what's that size? I'm not sure. Okay. This, it's bigger than 14. Huh. The smaller than 18. I, I don't know. I didn't, wouldn't. Yeah. That one's probably 20. Yeah, this is a huge variety but, there. But most of them, the rest of them are 18s. Yeah. And this is only a tenth of my plugs, but this is just kind of what I would do to pre-buy for a tour to have extra plugs. Okay. So the next group, this is a, these are Renault racing plugs. Okay. It says Renault right on them, and they're made out of bronze. Oh. Again, take apart. Um, pretty deep plug, but high performance. See, the electrodes are perfect, oh. but they're still 18 thousandths wow. uh, to the center. And you just push them down a little bit to make them closer and, or farther away. Okay. But that's in my 1906 um, Grand Prix Renault that's got the giant motor in it. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. It's massive. Okay. These are Leonard air-cooled plugs. Okay. So the air-cooled portion is the the casing of the spark plug is cooling. So, so they this, stick out, and that's like cooling fins. They, yep. Okay. The spark plug. Uh -huh. So the spark plug wouldn't get as hot because the spark plug is gets really hot compared to the the head. So that was a, a nice design, 18 uh, millimeter. Okay. The next one, this company made all kinds of spark plugs uh, with this their insulator, and these spark plugs were a convenient racing plug because they you uh, simply a fork went across oh, this to hold it on. So it just held some tension in that groove. Right, a little fork. So these were very quick to change, take in and out. Again, eighteen millimeter. Wow. Okay. Thomas Edison, who mm -hmm. made all kinds of stuff. In this era, made all kinds of spark plugs. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so this is, I have several different kinds that he made. Uh, it, it's kind of neat to have a Thomas Edison spark yeah. plug in your vehicle. Absolutely, that is cool. Uh, Albert Champion made all kinds of spark plugs, and Albert Champion was a Frenchman. Was not a American. We think Champion is an American company. It's not. It's French. Interesting. So they come in a cocoon, like a, like the chocolates. Oh. So they're wrapped inside of this chocolate. Oh, interesting. That's how they come. Yeah, if you look at that, that does not look like a spark plug at all. Okay, so the, the thing is, what we're trying to do today is, these are all original plugs, and it would really hurt somebody in the spark plug hobby that collects them to see these used and thrown away in, a, in an engine today. Right. So I, I'm through doing that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our own spark plugs with what's available today. Okay. So when you say you, you need to make, what you're really doing is you're finding appropriate new plugs that you can adapt. Yes. Okay. So here are two specimens that are possible to make spark plugs out of, these two spark plugs. Okay. One is a Bosch, and Bosch was around 100 years ago. Yep. And there's a champion. Uh, again, around 100, 120 years ago. Yeah, right. So the first thing you do when you buy one of these, you make sure the heat range is a hot plug. Okay. So the hot plug is, see how far this paper clip goes in there? Yeah. And this one, how far the paper clip goes in there? Wow, okay. Quite a ways. So here's another plug that looks like these. There the paper clip only goes in a teeny bit. Right. So the depth behind this, you know, underneath there, that kind of indicates the temperature range of the plug. Yes. the uh, A hot plug has the porcelain not insulated by the jacket of the spark plug. Okay. The problem is with a, with a, with a cold plug is wherever, however far it is when you touch this, uh -huh. That's that's the limit of how far you can machine it down, because otherwise the, the metal starts going away very quickly. Right, it's tapered in there. Okay. So that's what's inside of this when you when you push this in there. 
Yeah. So once you get where it gets wide, you can't do any more machining. Gotcha. So this was like that. And yeah. I ruined that purposely to show you that there I went too far. Uh-huh. But okay. I had already used this one for a long time. Right. Okay. Okay. So so say uh, we're back to these spark plugs again, but we want uh, our head, we either have a T-head and that our pucks we're threading it into the pucks, or we have a thick water jacket that we're going through to get into the combustion chamber, we want a deep thread. So these two spark plugs have a lot of meat before it comes to the, the, the base of the spark plugs. Right. So what I do is, we'll do the champion first. Okay. So I made these this morning. So these two spark plugs were exactly the same this morning. Look at that. Okay. Okay. So this is a $5 Champion spark plug. Uh huh. So I machined this away. Yep. Which takes five minutes. Okay. And I still have an eighth of an inch, more than an eighth of an inch of solid steel mm. in here before it gets to my ceramic. Yep. And now I have, you know, an inch depth. Yeah. And then when you do that, you cut off this. That's your ring that goes here. Mm -hmm. And then you buy a box of copper spark plug gaskets. Okay. Yep. And then when you get it machined, you put that on there. Mm -hmm. And then that will seat. And then you're, I'm using the lathe to cut the 18 millimeter overall diameter where these threads are. Yep. Okay. But then I don't use my lathe, which I could. I don't use the lathe to cut the threads in this. Okay. So what I do to cut the threads in this, I have an 18 millimeter die. Yep. And I simply thread the die on the, the plugs, threads that are here, and then it goes past the gap and it cuts the threads here too. Yeah. And that way the, the pitch stays consistent all the way through. Yeah. Because if you do it on the lathe, you know, there's still a little bit of play where you start and stop the threads. It might not be perfect, and you don't want to do anything to jeopardize your original head. Right. So use your lathe, cut 18 millimeters there, use the die to finish cutting it, mm -hmm. and then you have a perfect plug. So that's a champion. Yeah. That and that's a D51 good. champion. Yeah, here we go. D21. D21 champion uh -huh. or, or a Napa Auto Parts number of a 502. Okay. So this becomes a very good spark plug for high depth. Now, is it common to need a, a deep depth spark plug in these very early cars? Yep, it is, more often than not. Okay. Um, the metallurgy, they just made it bigger and thicker. Yeah. They just did that. They weren't afraid of it. No. <laughs> so I like the, the Bosch better because yeah. the Bosch has a bigger hex, yeah. looks more historic, than the modern champion. Yeah, sure does. So the Bosch plugs are are more, but here's what I did this morning. I did the same thing on the Bosch plug. Look at that difference there. Yeah. So I have about an inch, um, about an inch throw compared to half an inch throw. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then to give you an idea, these two plugs here. I took these out of an engine today, a, a twin cylinder engine. Okay. I've been running this one for a while, yep. and you see how perfect the, the reading is. This yep. is not a dissertation on jetting, but the idea is on a spark plug, you want a kind of a cocoa color in the center, mm -hmm. and then the black around the ring is, is uh, maybe your idling and that kind of stuff, but your temperature range and your jetting range and your spark plug condition report is if you have cocoa in the center, You've done a perfect job. So these yep. are running perfectly. Yep. Yep. That's and right. then one last thing. If you need a higher heat range plug because you have too much oil, you know, you've really got old piston rings and leaky valves, you don't have to thread this section here. You don't have to thread that. Right. You can leave that. But then this one I put in an engine that I did that is not an oil burning engine. And you see the blue here. Yes, I do. So that blue is because it's not heat synced. Okay, so it got hot. It got hot. So this made it even a hotter plug, where if you go ahead and thread this, 
where this is heat sinked into your head, then this runs the same heat range as what it was designed for. I see. But okay. if you had to have a little bit more heat range, don't put threads here. As you are teaching us, the threads are a heat sink. They keep them yes, cool. Yes, they are. Okay. And then you're not done yet, considering we have a magneto. Magneto era was uh, 1905 to 1920, where they had magnetos. Magnetos can't take 30,000s or 28,000s gap. A magneto, to not hurt the coils uh, and give it a proper load, need a non-resistor plug to begin with. So make sure that, that when you measure the resistance from the electrode, from the tip of the threads to the tip of the electrode, yep. that you have one ohm or something like that. Yeah. So it's not a resistor ohm, a resistor plug. A resistor plug will measure four or five thousand ohms. Okay, wow. The next thing is the plug gap needs to be 18 to 22 thousandths from here to here for a magneto car. Uh huh. Okay. So it's, so it's going to be 10 thousandths closer together. So they have a much closer gap, a smaller. On gap. a magneto car. On a magneto. Magneto car to not hurt it. So um, no resistance plus short gap. Yeah. And then one more thing is too is, uh, I don't think I covered it, is some people, because they think they can get more of a, more buying options by changing it to a 14 millimeter plug, mm -hmm. they'll put a 14 to, an 18 down to 14 millimeter adapter, yep. so they get a one inch thick. Well, it sounds like a quick and easy way to do it. But it's not, because those are really fixed at 30, 35 thousandths gap, and you really can't get a finer gap. The next thing is they're almost all resistor, and they're not hot enough plugs to burn off your oil if you don't have a perfect antique car engine. Okay. So don't modify and use an adapter, uh, thinking that you can get by with buying some, you know. So it's likely to run poorly and foul out quick. Yes. I so don't go from 18 to 14 millimeter. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Well, you've, uh, how long have you been, uh, working with these very old cars now, Alan? Oh, 50 years. <laughs> 50 years. And, uh, yeah, and this is a, just a fraction of your collection, but I appreciate you kind of getting them organized for us. What, what a joy to talk to someone that has all this experience. <laughs> you're not reading a book to tell us about it. You've got your experience. Yeah. When you're doing on your tours, um, is a 500 mile tour, is that fairly typical? Yeah. That's over four or five days. Yeah. We used to do the Great American Race and we do, we would do 500 miles a day. Oh, wow. And do that for 10 days in a row. That's grueling. Right. With hundred and some year old cars. Yeah. Now we've relaxed to driving a hundred miles a day with 125 year old cars. Mm -hmm. And then even if we needed extra plugs, and I always carry a few extra, maybe one per cylinder, okay. keep extra with me. Now, when the, you talk about these take apart plugs, uh, does that allow you to service them literally on the side of the road if yes, you need yes, to? Yes, it does. All so, you need is two crescent wrenches. <laughs> That's all you need. And so you don't always necessarily need extra spare plugs. Nope. You can just take them apart, clean them up, and put That's them right. back. That's right. Okay. But, but, but to find long reach antique plugs, you've really got to figure out which one is that. Yeah. Which one has that option for you. Right. So, um, and you might get one that has that option for you and you might get it and it's actually 20 millimeter or 16 millimeter. So it's almost better to not go with the correct antique plugs. Yeah. You know, find some modern plugs that are inexpensive, machine those down to suit you, uh, yeah. and you can do a perfect job. You'll get a perfect, uh, you know, tail tail on your plug that's running perfectly, yeah. and it's very repeatable. The take apart plugs never seal as well as a modern plug that's all uh, one piece. I hadn't piece thought about that, of course. Because the sealing surfaces aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, where a modern plug is. Yeah. If you're going to use your car a lot, buy some modern ones, machine them down, make them right, put the right gap in, and have and a be wonderful done with day. That. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to show this part number on this box. Those are very nice looking plugs. So for those of you, you know, Alan's done the research for you, so <laughs> take advantage of this here. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. This is really good fun. Thank you.